Entries for our annual photography competition are open and we've extended the dates and added a new category, Garden and Home Gems. This is an ideal time for many of us to look around home, at plants in your window box or into your garden, whatever you have access to. You're bound to find some interesting wildlife to photograph. We're here today to offer some pointers and ideas to help get you started. Of course, you don't have to enter our photography competition, just taking photos on its own is a fun activity. Um, so my assistant Russ today um, is going to tell us what cameras we've got here on the table in front of us. So Russ, what's this camera here? Okay, so this is a compact system camera um, where you can take the lens off and exchange with others, which is a bit like an SLR as well, so they will, I'd say they're the same category really. Cool. And this one? Um, this is a bridge camera, um, so this has a built-in zoom, you can't change the lens but you can still do a lot and control kind of sort of wide color photo built in. Cool, and then we've got this here. And of course you've got your smartphone which most people have that has at least one camera built into it, so yeah. you can do quite a bit on that as well. Cool, and we've got a couple of other specialist sort of bits of equipment here. Yeah, we? as outliers you've got a trail camera here and you've got a, an actual microscope here, um, so those are things that you can also have a play around with in your home and other areas, um, but we won't go into detail on those today, so we'll mainly be thinking about this sort of setup. Great. Our first tip today is do a recce and do your research. Try and get to know the subject of your photograph. Whether you're in your garden or looking out the window, just sit still for a moment and watch. If you're patient, then wildlife might come to you. When you finish doing that, look up any wildlife in any ID guides you might have, or if not, just use Google. Always have your camera ready to go. There are plenty of things in your garden and home, so look out for things like wildflowers, pollinators like bees and butterflies on flowers, insects in general around your house, and birds on your feeder or gathering nest material in your garden. Your exposure, which is the shot that you take, is made up of several things and there are many settings that you can change on cameras like SLRs and bridge cameras. There are things such as shutter speed, aperture and ISO. In this video we're not going to go into too many details but if in doubt use your camera's automatic mode. Russ is trying to take a photo of a linnet in the scrub behind our house so he chose to work in shutter priority for this shot using a single point autofocus on the bird's eye. Our next tip is to think about the perspective and the composition of your photo. If you're always standing up and holding your camera at eye height, you're missing out on some great shots. Get down low or get up high. Here Russ is sitting down low so he can take a photo of some of the bees and the flowers. Take photos from different distances. So you can get up really close to take macro shots. You can take telephoto shots from a distance or you can take wide angle shots. You might have heard of the rule of thirds, which divides a shot into three lines horizontally and three vertically, like a grid, in order for you to focus the points of interest. This is a helpful starting point, but feel free to get creative and experiment. You may have heard of depth of field, so for example, when you have less depth of field, the subject of your photo is sharply in focus and the background is out of focus. This can be a good technique to try, especially with telephoto shots, although you may want more depth of field, so more of your shot in focus for macro shots. Your smartphone might have a setting that creates a look with less depth of field, so have a look for that. You need light for your photo. On a sunny day like today, you might have loads of natural light, but you might want to remove shadows, boost the light or soften it. For this, you can use reflectors or diffusers. A reflector can just be a sheet of white paper reflecting the light onto your subject to remove shadows. You could also use an LED light for this. Whereas a diffuser can be used to soften the light. Russ here is using a diffuser on his flash. You don't need expensive equipment. You can use semi-transparent household items for this, such as thin paper or plastic milk cartons. Throughout this video, Russ has been using a fill-in flash with a diffuser to fill in shadows and stop blurring on his photos. Or why not go out during the golden hour? These, this is the hour before dusk and dawn, when the light is warm and soft. When taking photos of nature, the welfare of the wildlife always, always comes first. It's really important not to unnecessarily disturb the wildlife you're observing, especially important at this time of year to avoid disturbing nesting birds. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has been really helpful. Please get in touch if you have any questions. Otherwise, get out there and have some fun. 
For more information on the photo competition and to enter, go to www.wildlifebcn.org and search for photo competition. Thank you.